Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our church, uh, Delaware United Methodist Church. I'm your pastor, Angel Rosario, and we want to welcome you to our church and thank you for being here, for joining us uh, this evening in, in our Good Friday service. Um, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna start soon um, after the prayer, but before we start, I just wanted to mention to you, in your bulletin, there is a uh, lot of scriptures and um, in, we're going to be reading out of the gospel and uh, the, the, what happened with Jesus during this time, during this Friday. And I have a couple of items here that represent uh, what we are about to read. So during the time of silent meditation, I will take the item that it's, it's been read. Uh, for example, the first one, it's the crown of thorns. And after that reading, during the silent meditation, I'm gonna go around and you can have a feel of that crown of thorns and each item, and you can look at it and meditate on what we just read, um, having this item in your hand. So I'm gonna pass around that, and after uh, we pass that around, we're gonna sing the first verse of that song, that all the way through the end. That's how we're gonna be doing this time, during the time of silent meditation, you will have the opportunity to have a feel of each item, the crown, the piece of wood, the nail, the vinegar, the piece of cloth, and, and so on. So that's what we have for, for you today. And at, at the end of the service, after the benediction, then we can all stand up and leave in silence until Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday, that we will celebrate the risen, our Lord that has been risen. Amen. At this time, I wanted to have a moment of prayer to start our service. Father God, we come to you this evening and we thank you for giving us the opportunity for us to come and remember what was like that day, that horrible day in which you, Jesus, took the sin, the wages of our sins upon you the day in which you receive the hits in your body, the days in which you were crucified, the day in which the world experienced the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today, God, we have the opportunity to remember that. We weren't there, Lord. But your scripture tells us all about what happened in that day. And we know that it wasn't easy for you. It cost a lot. For my sins to be forgiven, it cost you your life. So Lord, I pray that your presence be in this place today. Holy Spirit, help us. That even though we weren't there when this happened, help us just to imagine the way that the, our Lord Jesus Christ had to go through the pain and the suffering. Help us, Lord, give us a vision, give us a sign. Help us, Holy Spirit, to experience in a supernatural way what happened to Christ on that day, on a day like today. Lord, and as we leave this place, may we leave with that memory Remembering how much it cost you, Jesus, our freedom. And I thank you, God, for forgiving our sins. Thank you, Lord, because every day we, we sin against you. And this is an opportunity for us to experience how much it cost you to forgive our sins. That it was not something easy but it costs you a lot of pain and suffering. God, take control of everything that we're about to do this evening. 
And may we experience you in a way that we have never experienced you before. I pray this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Walk with Jesus as he takes his final earthly steps. Observe the ordinary people who cared for the body of the word made flesh. Find yourself in faith's most difficult hour. Please stand as you desire. Who has believed what we have heard? He was despised and rejected by others. As one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised. He was wounded for our transgressions. Upon him was laid the punishment that made us whole. And with his stripes, we are healed. Let us all pray together. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. From Matthew chapter 27, verses 27 through 31. Some of the governor's soldier, sold, soldiers took Jesus into their headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. They wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. And they placed a reed stick in his right hand as a scepter. Then they knelt before him in mockery and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and grabbed the stick and struck him on the head with it. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led him away to be crucified. This crown of thorns was made in Jerusalem, handmade in Jerusalem, and these represent the crown that it was put on our Lord Jesus Christ mocking him. I'm going to pass this around and be very careful because the thorns are really pointy. While the other ones let us meditate in silence.
chapter 19, verses 16 and 17. Then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. And from Matthew chapter 27, verse 32, along the way, they came across a man called Simon, who was from Cyrene, and the soldiers forced him to carry Jesus' cross. These represent the old rugged cross, the wood that our, our Lord Jesus Christ carried. And from Matthew chapter 27, verses 33 through 36. And they went out to a place called Golgotha. The soldiers gave him wine mixed with bitter gall. But we, when he had tasted it, he refused to drink it. After they had nailed him to the cross, the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. Then they sat around and kept guard as he hung there. Our next item is the nail. As you pass this around, this was the material similar to what our Lord Jesus Christ uh, was crucified with. It was a little longer and a little thinner, but when you feel it, imagine a nail like this piercing through his hands and feet.
I'm reading from John 19, verses 28 through 30. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of soil wine, sour wine, was sitting there. So they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. During this time of meditation, imagine you being thirsty and you want water, but instead you receive this. You can smell it. Anybody thirsty? John 19, 38 through 40. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made from myrrh and aloes. Following Jesus' 
Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in long sheets of linen cloth. These represent a cloth that Jesus was wrapped with. Matthew 27, 50 through 54. Then Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, rocks split apart, and tombs opened. The bodies of many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' resurrection, went into the holy city of Jerusalem, and appeared to many people. The Roman officer and the other soldiers at the crucifixion were terrified by the earthquake and all that had happened. They said, this man truly was the Son of God. After Jesus gave up his spirit and said, it is finished, the curtain in the temple broke in half, giving us free access to the Father as many times as we want. And now we have free access to our Father. Glory to God.
John 19, 41 through 42. The place of crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. A day like today, our Lord Jesus Christ suffered in his body. He was wept so many times. He was in pain. He was bleeding. And people mocking him, saying, this is a king. And the king needs a crown. So they put that crown on him. They made him carry the cross, old, rugged, heavy cross, after he was wept. Many of the criminals that had to go through the same process would have died right after the weeping. But Jesus kept on. He carried the cross. And when he got to the place called the Golgotha, they pierced his body, his hands, these nails. And then he was thirsty. And they gave him vinegar to drink. And he gave up his spirit. And after that, he was wrapped in clothes. The curtain broken half, and he was laid in the tomb. All of that had to happen so you and I will enjoy this freedom that we have. 
so you and I can receive forgiveness of sin. You see, what the Lord went through was not easy. Therefore, there is no sin that cannot be forgiven. Because of all the stuff that Jesus had to go through, because of all the pain and suffering, there is no sin in which cannot be forgiven. When we open our hearts, and when we ask God to forgive our sins, all of this, it's enough to forgive all of our sins. So would you please bow your head and let us ask God for forgiveness. Lord, we recognize that a day like today, it was not easy for you to go through all the pain and suffering you did all that for love and to forgive our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price. And it belonged to me and to us. Father, we ask that you forgive our sins. We recognize that we have sinned against you and against our brothers and sisters. And we ask God, that we receive your forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate what you did on the cross. We don't take it for granted. We know that it cost you a lot, your own life. And because of that, we also know that our sins have been forgiven. Thank you, Lord. We begin the long waiting through the night and into another day and the darkness of another night. Go in peace and hope. Let us all leave in silence. <laughs>